like being backstage in WWE. Uh, wow. You know, the one thing that I can say is it's like walking on eggshells. <laughs> uh, you know, everyone is is the guys who don't make it are the guys who in my opinion who are a little too relaxed who really tend to uh y- you know and, and this is coming from me from my experience and that was my big fall i don't know if you remember in the beginning i was talking about being content and that was my problem i think just being there was at that time uh, with the back injury and everything, I was, I was like, hey, you know, I'm here, you know, what more I can complain about, you know. Um, that was the worst attitude that I could have. And that's the one thing that if I get go back there, the one thing now that I understand, um, that you can't, you can't be content. You can't, you know, you have to go and you have to prove that you want it. And... You know, because th- there's only few cases, I'm not gonna say any names, but there's a few cases where there are uh, people, <laughs> there are cases where there are few people which, you know, obviously they're guided and they're pushed straight from the beginning, but they're very few. That's all few and far in between, so. <laughs> Like, did you ever have a rib pull on you, or did anybody? Did you ever rib anybody? Uh, Is no. One or two reasons not to be a pro wrestler. Uh, no, 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 no. But I'm actually the guy that did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking, appreciate it. I was thinking, appreciate it. I was thinking <laughs> two reasons a sequel. Did, did you enjoy it? I was awesome. I liked yeah. it. It was funny. Oh, well, it's not that negative. I don't think. Not yeah. that was funny. It's just yeah, real yeah. stories. So. <laughs> I don't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be next. <laughs> oh yeah. Um. So have you ever been ribbed, or? You know what? You know what? I've never been ribbed. You know, I've never been ribbed. Uh, is that something? But see now, and see now, this is gonna go out. And now they're all gonna rib me. Um, <laughs> but I had a real good rapport with everyone. You know, I mean, I don't have anything bad to say about really. You know, uh, really anyone. Everyone treated me really good. I think. Uh, you know, my case was a lot different from. I think a lot of the guys. Um, the the key is respect. And if you can go and show everyone and give everyone respect, um, that is the one thing that they can't take away from you. That if you respect them, hey, you know what? 90% of the time, they're going to respect you back. And uh, that's the one thing that wrestling didn't teach me. And my parents taught me that. So um, I never had a problem. I never had a problem with anyone. Did you ever get to meet, uh, I'm sure you did, Vince McMahon? Like, what was it like interacting with him? Like, what kind of person? You know what? All these bad things that are said about Vince and all this stuff, I don't see it, you know? I don't see it at all. I mean, the guy is a genuinely nice guy, you know? Uh, You cross him, then obviously I can see where, (laughs) you know, obviously that's not a good thing to do. I don't think... I'm trying to think of how many people actually got over on Vince in the end. Um, I think Vince uh, is the type of guy who you show him respect, you're cordial, he'll he'll be the same right back. Um, I have nothing but good things to say about Vince. Did you ever have any affiliation at all with WCW? Or? No, not at all. What happened was, back in the day, UPW was a territory of WWE. Um, and so when I started training here, obviously WCW was still running, um, and I wanted to actually at times wanted to go over and see if WCW was interested, but I never sent in a tape or I never even pursued it. My main thing was always WWE, so you know, so that was something that I always scratch my head and wonder hmm you know what if you know but in the end i guess it all worked out in the end so um like how did like when the business like when wcw and ecw folded like how did that affect the business and wrestlers um in my opinion it hurt the business because there was no other competition 
and then like I said, you know, story angles and and you know, all of a sudden everything gets compressed and gets uh, it, how do you say it? It gets uh, you get limited, you know. And then the hard thing is that you got top guys now from WCW, you got top guys from ECW now coming, and there's only so many spots on a roster. And that's where it gets real tough because now you're going to have to go and try to help out, uh, not help out, but try to put on a show where you have all these top guys and, uh, you know, obviously someone has to go under, (laughs) but, um, I think that was the, the, you know, that, that's where it kind of got difficult in my opinion. Like, you know how, like, 18 guys recently got released? Yeah. Like, they lost their jobs, like, in a span of, like, one day, I think it was, yeah, like, two days. Yeah, yeah. Like, how, is there any way for, like, the business to change to, to prevent stuff like that from happening? Or is that just something... You, you know what? Is? No, 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 no. That's the nature of the business, you know. Uh, the business now, WWE is now is on the IPO. So, it's a publicly traded stock. So, they have to prove to the stockholders that they're making money. And the first place that goes is talent, because that's what costs the most. So that's when you have to evaluate talent and say, you know what, this guy, you know, well, maybe, you know, he can go somewhere else and get a name for him, and then he can come back. I don't think anyone, uh, anyone that got released is exempt from coming back. I just think that much in a case like mine, they have to go and prove themselves somewhere else and then come back so you know I know a lot of the guys I'm sure they're heartbroken and whatever but in the end you know if they really want it bad enough um, you know it's very very possible for them to to come back I just think that they the majority of the guys I think um, that got released uh, I can say that a lot of them were kind of like me you know very content just being there and you can't go there with that attitude. You got to go with that hunger, that 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 desire to be the best, be the champ. And and I'll be straight with you. I never really had that desire to be the champ. You know, I, my desire was just go and try to have a good match every night. I never thought of the big picture. And uh, that was obviously that was my downfall. You know, just the wrong mentality. But. You know what? I'm looking for that opportunity, and once I get back, you know what? They'll, they'll totally see a different different person. You know, I, I'll be ready this next time. Have you ever had like a totally crazy or wild experience in a match, like something that you'll just never forget, something ridiculous or funny? Or... <sighs> trying to think. Uh. Wow. Well, I don't know if I should. Well, I'll say it anyways. I don't. I don't, I don't care. But I remember one time I, I I was I went and I was uh, I forgot where it was. I was at one of the restaurants and I ate something that was really spicy. <laughs> and I had to work that night and I can still remember my stomach was bubbling. It was just just bubbling like crazy. And I was like, oh my god. And uh, next thing you know. Uh, it was, you know, we did a match and whatever during the match, and right in the middle of the match, I had to take a take a shit, right in the middle of the match, and it was so hard just to tighten up my, cause it it, it wanted to come out, <laughs> the, the the crap wanted to come out, and I was like, oh my gosh, I was tagging up with a cue, and I was just sitting there going like this, tightening up my butt cheeks, and like, ah, please, please hurry up, hurry up, get this shit over with, and that was the whole time, I was, the whole time I was just praying like oh god hurry 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 the whole time uh i mean i could obviously obviously remember that one but uh yeah if anything i mean that's probably the one thing that funniest story that i can think of at least for myself that i can think of what's your opinion of uh backyard wrestling um you know what i know a lot of people bash backyard wrestling and i know a lot of people 
have nothing but negative things to say. But you know what? I'm different, man. You know, here are kids who want to wrestle, who, you know, obviously that's not the right way to get to the WWE, but they're living out a fantasy. They're living out a dream, and and they do it in their backyard. Hey, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna criticize someone for their dreams or their their aspirations, even though in my opinion, yeah, they're they're doing it the wrong way. But I'm not gonna bash them for for wanting, to, you know, wanting and loving wrestling. I'm not gonna bash anyone who truly loves the business and truly loves wrestling. You know, I mean, obviously, if they're doing it for other reasons, then obviously that's where the problem starts. But the majority of these guys, I mean, they love they love wrestling. So anyone who loves wrestling, I, I don't have a problem with them. Yeah, that's a good interview. Thank you very huh? much. Oh,